Yes, well, I, th I think they are. So the keynote uh, speaker, um, Marcelo Neri, uh, actually said that Brazil is like a snapshot of the world. Um, I think that uh, South Africa, uh, South Africa is right up there in the, uh, one of the highest inequality countries in the world, as, as is Brazil, but Brazil's drifted down the world table. South Africa stayed right up there. Um, and, uh, and obviously has a very distinctive history. Well, it was profound. I think that's the first point. It was profound in the sense that it was structural. It wasn't as though it was just a norm. You know, when people think about uh, South Africa apartheid, they think of racial discrimination uh, as a sort of a, a norm. But it, it was profound. It influenced education expenditure, for example. It influenced spatial, where people lived, put people, you know, put the majority of the population in rural peripheries, far away from the labor market, gave them very bad education. And uh, it's these legacies that continue to the present day. It, they take a long time to overcome uh, those legacies, uh, especially in the climate of the, what, what has been the world economy since then, since 1994. The world economy has been one in which uh, competitiveness is the name of a game, fairly good skills, um, ability to create your own work. Uh, the, the legacies of apartheid were exactly the opposite. What well, dominates inequality? So the technical exercises that show that, the, that labor markets, the earnings distribution and employment creation dominate uh, the overall household inequality story in South Africa. And, uh, and that's, uh, that's easy to understand uh, in, this, in the sense, again, of our legacy, right? If you think about South Africa, whether it's mining, uh, legacy on which we built a, a manufacturing base. So quite a formal industrial structure, but one that was um, exclusionary or only used the bulk of the population to the extent it needed the, the population. Um, now, uh, th that's proved a huge problem in the country. The, the informal sector was actually stifled under apartheid. So it was very small. Then you've got this formal sector in which um, the, the mining industry, the manufacturing industry, when you open up to the world economy, they've become, they, they, they haven't grown. They haven't been the sectors that have grown. It's been the financial sector and the services sectors in South Africa that have grown. Again, the formal side of, of the economy, which are quite capital intensive, as you said. And, uh, and these other sectors have not flourished and have hired less and less workers. And so the, the story of employment in the post-apartheid period has been very sluggish employment creation uh, in the formal sector. The, the formal sector has, the informal sector has started to grow a, li a little bit, but hasn't sort of mushroomed. It's still very small by world standards, especially African standards, where it's almost like this residual sector picking up um, whoever's not hired in the formal sector. As a consequence, we have uh, world-beating unemployment rates, as measured by the ILO, for example, because we don't have this informal sector that just picks up the slack with underemployment. Um, and, and, and it's a problem. Uh, the, 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 the growth of the formal sector has been towards capital-intensive, higher-skilled uh, employment and away from the population as a consequence. Massive, massive. And so the two most vulnerable sectors of the, of the economy, um, well, from the workers' point of view, are domestic work and agricultural work. Um, and domestic work hasn't shrunk necessarily, and there's been some quite good legislation, you know, extending basic labor market protection to domestic workers, etc. cetera. But it's, it's not like a driver of employment creation. Nobody would think that. The agricultural sector has declined dramatically. Uh, so coming back to the Brazilian experience, the, what really started to turn inequality around in Brazil was the fact that the, the, the previously vulnerable or excluded started being included in the labor market and being employed and earning fairly decent wages. Uh, that's what we're battling to get right in South Africa.
So government has taken on the notion, uh, contentiously I think, that, that they're the employer of last resort, if you like. And so there has been quite a large expansion of, of the government public works programs um, um, with, but, but uh, measured in a, in a climate in which government is trying to do evidence-based assessment and monitoring and evaluation, and they haven't been uniformly successful. There's been, there have been some real successes, for example, um, programs in rural areas to clear out alien vegetation have been remarkably successful, surprisingly. Now, everybody thought that was tinkering on the margins. Well, those are the ones that have really had some, some impact. The, the type of public works programs where you build roads with spades and, and rural labor rather than you know, engineering companies, um, they happen, but they haven't been that, that successful at all. Well, that's what we've been talking about, I think. It's the legacy of apartheid to some extent. Uh, and then the way the, the way the economy, the world economy, has played, it, played out with the skills twist. South Africa has been subject to a skills twist in the classic uh, American or European sense. Uh, and, uh, and that's what you get. You, you get the population. You know, government has done a few things right. Uh, education levels have expanded. They were higher than Brazil, to use a counterfactual. Even in 1994, they were higher than Brazil, on average. They were around about seven years of schooling, whereas Brazil was around about five. Since then, they've gone up to uh, 10, just over 10 years on average. That's a good thing. That's a, a, a success. If you look at uh, water, uh, electricity, um, you know, those sorts of, of government services, there's been, they've, they've rolled them out. But at the end of the day, unless the, the return on that, in a narrow sense, in an income sense, is employment. If you don't get the employment, you don't see the return uh, on, on that, and, and that's the problem. Mm -hmm.